vampires. What do you think of when you hear the word vampires? Do you think about Dracula, the Prince of Darkness, or Buffy, the Vampire Slayer? When I hear the word vampires, I think of energy vampires. Energy vampires are those negative people and situations in our lives that try to control our emotions by feeding off of our fears and insecurities. They're all over. We interact with them every single day. So my TED Talk today, I'm going to be talking about energy vampires, but the most important thing is how do you protect and take care of yourself if attacked? The first vampire that I want to talk about is called the yes but vampire. These are people who, when you're giving them advice, respond by saying, yeah, but insert excuse here. These are the type of people who will not want to take 100% responsibility for their lives. They want you to take responsibility for their decisions. Why? Because if something goes wrong, guess what? They get to blame somebody else. Then you also have that they, are, they love to be the victim. And the victim, they want you to be their savior. So if you get, feel responsible for saving them, they just sucked you in to what I call the savior syndrome. Now you feel responsible for them. Now you want to make sure that they succeed. Now you want to make sure that everything goes well with them. They got you. They're there. Now there are some of the uh, yes but vampires who really don't know what they're doing or why, and they are emotionally immature. They're not consciously aware or really care whether or not that they're sucking on your energy. So it's a bad place to be either way. The second part of ener the second energy vampire that I want to talk about are the controller vampires. Now the controller vampires actually know what they're doing. They know and they promote fear and negativity. Can you guess which ones those are? Political ads and the media. Uh, have you ever seen a political ad that was positive? Uh, I haven't. So what the way that the political ads start to do, they start to get you emotional. They try to get your fear up. They try to get your anxiety up. And once you are emotional, you're no longer able to think clearly. You're not able to th think clearly, then you're more easily manipulated. Now, when you talk about the news media, you've heard the term, if it bleeds, it leads. That's kind of like what they do whenever they're talking about any story that they want to put out there. They kind of build up your fear, your anxiety, and I'm going to have to tune in to make sure that I'm OK. That type of thing happens. They're trying to get, uh, bring you in and control your emotions. Giving these energy vampires your emotions is, is like voluntarily giving them your remote control to your TV set. But it's not the TV set that it controls, it's your emotions. <clears throat> I would tell my students in my psychology class in the very beginning, be very careful of the people who try to control you. If I know what your fears are, you're mine. I can control you. If I know what your fears are, Oh, you're mine. I can control you, too. I can control you by pushing any fear button that you have. Your fear of going, being a good person, boop. Your fear of being alone, boop. You're mine. Motion is to go up. I have control over you. <clears throat> so I always tell my students, so if, they, if you give them the control over you, then they're actually living your life. So I remind them. No one can die your death, so don't let them live your life. And that's something I want you guys to remember, too, as well. So then how do you get back that remote control from them, emotional remote control? Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul author, and he wrote also um, the um, uh, Success Principles. He was talking about how you're the average of the five people you hang around with the most. If three of the people you hang around with the most are positive, you're more likely to be positive. If three of them are negative and you hang around with them more, then you are more likely to become negative. Now, Jack was asking his mentor who was explaining this, um, this concept to him, said, wait a minute, hold on. Are you saying that if my mom was negative, 
I'm not supposed to hang around with her? He goes, yep, you're not obligated. I can see it's, there's a lot of people who have that, they're like, yay, right? So hallelujah, I'm going to do that. So, <laughs> so what ends up happening is that he goes, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. This is my mom we're talking about here. I'm not supposed to hang around with my mom because she's negative. No, you're not obligated. You're not obligated to hang around anyone who is negative and makes you feel like you are being sucked dry or controlled. That's your choice. I, re I remember that uh, when I was um, actually in high school and I graduated and I uh, wrestled 126 pounds. Can you tell? Still there <laughs> in my mind. And what ended up happening was I went off to college and I, had, I, I, I got the dreaded freshman 15 pounds plus somebody else's 15 pounds. <laughs> and so I would come home and a friend of mine from high school would, be, would start to tease me. I said, oh, you're getting fat, you're getting fat, you're getting fat. And I'd get upset. I'd really get angry at him and then I realized that he was trying to push my buttons. So. I thought, what if I were to change the way that I responded to him? So the next time I saw him, did the same thing. Oh, you're getting fat, you're getting fat. So, yep, tortillas, man, living the good life. <laughs> yeah. And what it did was at that moment, I took back my emotional remote control from him. He no longer had the power to push my buttons. He no longer had the power to get my emotions going. I now regain that power. And that is the thing that I want you to think about when people try to push your buttons. You allow them to push your buttons. So now comes the best part, I believe, of my talk, which is taking care of yourself and your islands of stability. Now, your islands of stability are places when the life, when your life starts to get crazy, the storms, everything, the negativity, you're just stressed out. Some place that you can go to, that is your place to re-energize. This is a place, could be anywhere, could be walking, could be hiking, could be the beach, could be um, playing video games, whatever gets your energy back after a long day. <clears throat> These are the places, I like to call them the safe harbors for you. You need to have those places to go to when life starts to get too crazy. Dr. James Dobson uh, used to talk about, um, and to focus on the family radio station, he was talking about his, um, his kids fighting one time. They were fighting like cats and dogs. And he stopped and said, come here. He walked them over, pointed outside the window, said, out there, that's a mean and cruel world. In here, we have to have in our house peace. We have to have a place where you can come and not worry about it. Can you imagine if cruel out there, cruel here, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? My wife and I took this to heart, and we have our Hacienda de Paz, our place of peace. This is a place where we are ourselves. We don't have to put on a mask. We don't have to pretend to be somebody else that we're not. We're us. We've also come up with our own process every morning. One, we wake up with gratitude for everything that we have. We say, thank you, Lord, for everything that we've gotten and that we have in our lives. Then what we do is we have our yoga mats, and then we do our stretching, depending on which part of the body, usually the hips, or the ones as you get older that you need to stretch more. So we work on our body. Then we have our reclining couches where we recline, have our, our crystals in our hands, Tibetan music bowl, tap it, and then we listen to the tone. And then we just focus on the tone. From there, we have our devotional. Then we also give thanks and we pray for our, our family, our friends, and everything to kind of come into balance. Then at the end, my wife will do the Tibetan singing bowl. Same thing to end the meditation. We notice that if we don't do that, oh, the days are not as smooth as they should be. And so we make sure that we do have that time to set our, our, our uh, energy for the, next, for the day. 
<clears throat> now, it's very fascinating when I was doing this TED talk and preparing for it, it actually put me in a mindset or reminded me really of what my mission in life was. It reminded me, because think about it, I was, for many years, I did energy vampire workshop. I've done, you know, energy vampire book as a psychologist and a psychiatrist, or as a psychologist and a, and a teacher of psychology. I have taught about the negativity of energy vampires and to watch out for it. This TED talk actually kind of made me go, oh, wait a minute. I've been talking too much of the negativity. Now I know that my mission is to remind you, every single one of you, of the beautiful light, the positive light inside of you. Each and every one of you have this light. It's a light of love, it's a light of joy, it's a light of hope, it's a light of peace. We let the negativity of the world cover that up. We let the worry cover that light. And I want you to remember that that is a special, powerful light if you take care of it, if you nurture it. Because if you can imagine this, each and every one of you taking a look at that, that's what makes you so valuable. Letting that light shine, not only in your own life. Can you imagine if we all did this right now? We'd light up this whole room. It's amazing how that works. So now that's my mission, to be able to remind you that one, you're not your mind, you're not your body, you're not your past. What you are is a positive, beautiful, white light that you can shine wherever you go. Because the energy vampires are out there. No matter where you're at, they're out there. You have a choice. You can be like the three people who are negative in Wayne Dyer's story, or you can be one of the three positive ones. But if you want to change your life, and you want to change the people around you, be the light. Be the light of hope. Be the light of joy. Be the light of peace. And be the light of love. If you do that, can you imagine how awesome things will be for you and others around you. So I challenge you, go out, shine your light upon the world. And as like I said, the, the movies, you have the vampires, when the sun comes out, poof, they're gone. <laughs> Energy vampires, same thing, you shine your light, poof, those are gonna be gone too. So start focusing on the positive light that you have inside of you where we will all, we will all benefit, especially the people around you. So shine your light upon the world. Thank you.